this is all about uh, bacteria. <laughs> Just what you needed to hear, right? As you're eating your lovely lunch, this is really putting the beauty back into bacteria. So this is another subject which there is some conversation in the beauty industry about, but it's not necessarily correct. And I'm going to explain why this is so important. And then also, I'm going to touch on uh, CBD, because not only, <laughs> it's like, yeah, bring it on. Not only um, is it sold, you know, in oil that you can ingest, but you're also now seeing it in skincare. So I'm going to walk you through that and what you need to keep your eyes peeled on. So, um, oh, you know all about that. But just get me, I'll give you a little bit of background about the book. There's never ever been anything written on skin microbiome. There's nothing out there. And it's such a confusing topic that what we wanted to do, it took about a year and a half to write. Um, we wanted to write a book that just covered every single thing about skin microbiome and why you need it and why it's so important. And there are lots of chapters in there to do with the products which are a little bit healthier, not just for you, but for your skin microbiome as well. So, in case you can't read this, I want to blow your mind. Scientists in Georgia estimate the number of bacteria on our planet to be 5 million trillion trillion. Can you imagine that? That's a five with 30 zeros after it. There is more bacteria on Earth than there are stars in the universe. And actually, bacteria has even been found on the space station. Samples were taken when they did their spacewalks, and they've been analyzed. And the good news is they're not harmful. They don't want to take over our planet. <laughs> so you know what's going to happen next, don't you? You're going to start seeing space bacteria in your skincare products. That's going to be the next thing, <laughs> space dust takes 20 years off your face. Um, and then scientists have found these cells as high as 40 miles in the atmosphere and miles and miles beneath the ocean floor. So bacteria is without doubt the majority. Ah, ah. OK, here's some other interesting facts, especially you having a baby soon. We inherit every one of our genes, but we leave the womb without a single microbe. Did you know that? As we pass through our mother's birth canal, we begin to attract entire colonies of bacteria. By the time a child can crawl, he has been, or she, <laughs> has been exposed or blanketed by an enormous unseen cloud of microorganisms a hundred trillion or more. Now, what some doctors are starting to think is, is that babies who have been born by C-sections or have taken antibiotics, that that is actually damaging that child's microbiome. Now, what's happening with C-section babies, of course, for none of you, <laughs> who doesn't know what a C-section is? Well, that's basically where it's not born traditionally through the vagina canal. Anywho, what they're doing, they're popping. <laughs> it sounds like, what are they doing? They're getting um, some linen. They're coating it with mum's microbiome in the vagina. Sorry, men. Sorry, we're saying the V word. But they pop it in there an hour before you give birth. And then they take it out. And then just after baby's born, they actually coat the baby with it, and then they just line the baby's mouth with it. Has that grossed you out? He's still eating. He's not grossed out. He is not grossed out. But that is the truth. So that's a thought. And the reason why they're doing it is because they feel that that's a really good start to a baby's life is to have all of mum's really good microbiome. Okay, this is true. We all know this skin is the largest organ. But most of us tend to forget that it's serving a purpose, like our heart, our lungs, liver, kidneys. And the reason being is that skin is the only organ that we are literally wearing on the outside of our body. So that's why it's become an organ of vanity. And that's why there's a lot of doctors that have pushed the skin over to the beauty industry. Unless it's a dermatologist, but your traditional practitioner 
doesn't really, you know, know anything about the skin and quite frankly doesn't even want to learn about the skin because that's for the beauty industry or go and see a dermatologist. But it really is our first line of defense to the outside world. And in fact, that's where our first immune line of immune system is. It's in our skin. Now, the more alkaline our skin goes, remember I was talking about alkalinity versus acidity. The more alkaline our skin becomes, that immune system starts to break down. So the conversation that our cells have with each other, it's a bit like you've got a really bad connection. You're only getting every third or fourth or fifth word. So what happens is that environmental pathogen is not stopped by our immune system in our skin, and then it ends up entering the body. And the more alkaline our skin is, the sicker it is, which means that it is open to invasion. Again, the beauty market is the largest market in the world here in the US. And a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I don't know whether it's, uh, is it because Americans are more vain? I don't think it is. I think it's just that we are massive consumers of all of these types of products. But here's another fact I thought you'd like. Look at this. Only about 5 to 20% of the aging process has to do with our genes. Everything else is to do with our lifestyles, smoking, drinking, maybe not getting enough sleep. All of that is like sort of a light switch. We can either turn on the good genes or we can turn the bad genes off. Okay, now, I know this seems like a bit of a chemistry lesson, but I know you're going to love this. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because if you were to go on the internet or in beauty magazines or other brands' websites, they're actually saying that skin needs to be a pH 5.5 or 6. Well, there is a lot of scientific ev evidence that shows the natural skin surface pH on average is below five. Below five means it's mildly acidic. And the reason why that's so, ben even for children, the reason why this is so, so good to know is the moment your skin starts to become alkaline, all of that good bacteria literally just drops away from our skin. Now, yes, it can replenish itself, but if you're showering in the morning and you're using, say, sodium lorith uh, body washes, and then in, a, in the evening again, you're using alkaline body washes, your skin never, ever has the opportunity to recover, and you're literally sterilizing your skin microbiome. You're going to love this one. And I love this one because this is a study that was done over eight years. So there was two groups of ladies. One were given alkaline products to use on their skin and the others were given mildly acidic. At the end of the eight years, what they noticed was is that the alkaline skin tended to be drier and more brittle than an acidic one. The hydrated skin, which is the mildly acidic products, showed a 50% lower rate of wrinkling than those with dry skin. So that's why I always say mild acidity, I believe, is truly the secret to the fountain of youth. And it's not a magic ingredient, you know, it hasn't come from the land of Narnia and is doing all crazy things. It's just a state of being. See, when you give like your body, when you give your skin, just the basic needs, magic truly can happen. But 50% lower rate of wrinkling, sign me up. Okay, so research over the past several decades has revealed evidence that there's an inseparable link between a person's microbiome, digestion, body weight, skin health, and metabolism. So in other words, if your gut microbiome is off, you will probably find it hard to lose weight. You will probably suffer from more illnesses and the list goes on and on. Now, being British, I've got to bring in a bodily function. This right here is the future of medicine because what they're doing, they're studying our microbiome and they're actually 
offering us solutions by rebalancing our microbiome. And honestly, when you see what some of these results are, it, it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. Viome is basically a home test. This is technology that offers the highest resolution of a person's gut microbiome. Now, you all understand that, you know, taking probiotics is good for your gut health. You all understand that already, don't you? Yeah? If not, I would look into it. So, what happens is you sign up for this test. The test comes to your home. Uh, the, you have to do, you have to poop. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hide this one. You got to poop. It's the best way to analyze it. <laughs> you didn't think it could get any worse, did you? <laughs> so what you do, you just pop your you know, stool sample in the post, and then it goes off to the, the company. And then what they do, they do a metabolic intelligence test. This helps you gauge your blood sugar, insulin levels, stress responses, and a lot more by looking at urine pH as well. So it's not just your poop, it's your urine too. <laughs> but this honestly is the future of medicine. So much can be um, uncovered just by looking at the types of microbiome that are present. So this uh, is like $149 for a home test. I'm... I'm not affiliated with this company at all, but these couple of testimonials, and actually I went on to DNA testing choice because I wanted to make sure that these were really, you know, um, honest reviews. And this gets the highest rating out of all of the gut microbiome or poop microbiome testing um, kits. So this might seem really random, but you know, I, this is something I would definitely do. Okay, now if you just think your, your microbiome is just in your stomach and now you know it's on the surface of your skin, it's actually not. We are literally covered from head to toe with microbiome. Some of it's, you know, really good, but then there's some of it which, you know, we're not a fan of, and that is the Staphylococcus hominis, which is the stinky-causing bacteria. So what I want to do is I want to differentiate between what is a probiotic, what the heck is a prebiotic, and wait, there's a third, postbiotic. Have you ever heard of postbiotics? <laughs> okay, so here we go. A probiotic is any living good bacteria that help maintain body health. A prebiotic is anything that's non-living, it's a food component that encourages the growth of probiotics. And lastly, a postbiotic are soluble factors, which are metabolites, and uh, those are produced as a result of probiotic fermentation of prebiotics. Why am I telling you that? Have you seen skincare for sale where it says, oh, this contains prebiotics or probiotics? Yes, and they are super, super expensive. The reason why that is a lie is because, one, we know that a probiotic is a living cell. It's a living cell. None of these here, I don't know if you can see it, these are not probiotics, and this is what you'll see in skincare products. Ferments, well, that's not living, it's just a fermentation. A concentrated form of actives, like, you know, a floral extract. Well, that's not uh, a probiotic. And products containing lysates. Now, lysates are the typical ingredient that you will see in a probiotic skincare product. Well, that is not a living cell. And here's why it's illegal to put living bacteria in a product. Because when you manufacture a topical product, even a personal care product, you have to use a preservative system. The preservative system is there to kill all bacteria. It is not selective. It kills everything. And that is a legal requirement of the cosmetic industry. So 
right now, if someone is saying, oh, yeah, we've got live bacteria in that serum or that moisturizer, number one, it's a physical impossibility to keep a living cell alive in a product which has, which has used a preservative because the preservative would have killed that live bacteria. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep, good, great stuff. Now, here's how we overcame treating one of the worst skin conditions, really, which is acne. So we don't use probiotics because we know the challenges of retaining something that's living, putting it in a product and having it sit on a shelf. And then, of course, we're also using a preservative system. So we came up with prebiotics and we use botanicals. And when we put the humble British blackcurrant uh, together with pine, which is wildcrafted from Europe, we showed that it was 99.9% .9 effective at 30 seconds against, ready, I'm going to blow you away again. You're going to be impressed with this. Staphylococcus aureus and Propionibacterium. Do you like those two? Those are the two acne-causing bacteria. Now, if you were to use benzoyl peroxide, which is a very popular uh, acne ingredient, well, that's a bit like, I would describe it as Agent Orange. It wipes everything out. It's wiping out the good and it's wiping out the bad. But we don't want to wipe out the good. That's defeating the object of treating the cause, not the symptoms. So here, it's just selecting what's bad and it's suppressing it. Then it's enhancing the good because it's getting rid of the bad. Does that make sense? Well done. You're a good class. So we actually have a patent on this. We got the patent granted about ooh, a month and a half ago and the method as well. So this is very, very unique. Now, just look at benzoyl peroxide down in the right-hand corner. We tested it against a, uh, a leading industry brand, but that was only 75% effective at 30 seconds. So guess what this proves? That natural ingredients or botanicals can work just as well, if not better, than their synthetic counterparts. So these are some before and afters here. Um, the lady down in the right had suffered from acne for like 15 years. Um, and she started using this. And I would say at about the 45th day, her skin completely cleared. And then it is also actually working on uh, dermatitis. That's that hand picture. That's dermatitis. So just by balancing the good and you know suppressing the bad, it's amazing how the skin can actually correct itself. So here's postbiotics. Guess what? You've been using postbiotics and eating them even without knowing it. Algae, chlorella and spirulina, those are postbiotics. Aloe, that's also a postbiotic, as is coconut vinegar. Oh, I can't imagine what coconut vinegar would taste like, but <laughs> anyway, this is uh, a page from the book, and this is actually how we depict acne. We're trying to, you know, instead of having someone with loads of pimples over their face, let's just, you know, make it look pretty. So contrary to what science used to reflect, research is now showing that dysbiosis, which means it's an imbalance, is actually uh, the reason, the real cause of acne. So it's an imbalance between good and bad. And as we've shown, by enhancing the good and suppressing the bad, we get or we restore balance. This is going to interest you over there <laughs> because in the British Journal of Nutrition, investigators looked at several previously published clinical trials and concluded the use of certain probiotics during pregnancy helped prevent eczema in children ages two to seven. Isn't that remarkable? While more research is required, these results look really promising as preventative treatment for sc uh, chronic skin condition. In other words, you needn't pass on an eczema skin condition now because you can actually treat this before the baby is born. And besides eczema being uh, genetically inherited, they're actually now thinking that so is acne. 
And how they're preventing acne happening is they're now testing, say, twins. So you could have twins that are born and maybe on the father's side he had acne or his father had acne. And what they're doing is they are switching off the genes that would activate the active gene, which would be keeping stress levels down, watching hormone levels, making sure they don't get imbalanced, and it's working. So that's really exciting research. I'm going to stun you again with some more statistics. Your hair needs to be mildly acidic as well. Did you know that? Your hair needs to be mildly acidic. It's no different to your skin. Your scalp needs to be mildly acidic. That's no different to your skin. Guess what? Most shampoos are alkaline. They contain sodium lauryl sulfate, which needs a really high pH in order, for it, in order for you to get all those lovely frothy suds that you see in your shampoo. So that's why some people get a flaky scalp and dull looking hair. Now, the old wives' tale where you rinse your hair inside a vinegar, that works. Why does it work? Because vinegar is mildly acidic. See, we should have listened to our mothers, shouldn't we? So when Andy McDowell declares she's worth it, are our products. Doesn't she have great hair? I bet, she, I bet her hair is mildly acidic. Oh, God, this is so small. Okay, so... Here are some ingredients which really hurt our skinisms, our skin microbiome. Soap bars. Why? Because soap bars require a really high pH. So that bar of soap sitting in your shower, when you put that on your skin, you are now taking your skin uh, from mildly acidic to super alkaline in the stratosphere. Uh, alpha beta hydroxy acids, well, they need a really low pH of three. So going in the, the other direction is just as damaging as if you were going in the higher direction. Benzoyl peroxide, well, as you know, that wipes out not just the bad, but the good. Uh, sodium lauryl sulfate, sulfur, uh, that requires a pH of 9. So if you're using sulfur-based shampoos um, or soaps, again, that's alkaline, so it's harming your good skin microbiome. But I'm going to blow you away with another fact. Most people think, oh, well, if it's a pH of 6, it's only 1 between pH 5 and 6. It's not 1. I'm going to throw some maths at you now because I know you all can handle it. Ready? Buckle up. Okay, the pH scale is logarithmic. Do you feel like you're all having a math lesson now? Here we go. This means instead of one being the difference between five and six, it's a whopping tenfold difference. For example, if you cleanse your skin with a soap that has a pH 9, you are creating an environment 10,000 times more alkaline. Does that blow you away? The same can be said about extremely acidic products. Think about chemical peels. Chemical peels are not good. That's another one that's not good. Because in both cases, the healthy natural oils are being removed from the skin, causing inflammation. Gentlemen, two of you. I'm going to pick on the two of you. Your partners. No, there's three of you. I nearly forgot you. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. That's probably because I made that comment earlier about you using feminine hygiene products. Never mind. Anyway, no one remembers that. No, no, no one remembers that. Okay, right. Shaving soap. Shaving soap has a pH of like 10 to 12. So we're, we've gone beyond the stratosphere. We're at the space station right now with alkalinity. And so what happens is most men, once they've uh, shaved with water and soap, their skin becomes very dry, very irritated. They get razor burn, which ultimately leads, uh, leads to ingrowing hairs. So if you like wet shaving, here's a brilliant tip. What you want to do is just take a little bit of oil. You can pop down to the kitchen. You can get some olive oil. Just warm it, put it over your skin, 
And that's gonna, that, this is going to mean you're going to get a closer shave as well because you're softening your beard hair and the beard hair is very coarse. Then you put your shaving soap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that. Um, God, dirty table over there. We should have numbers on these tables. Um, where, where, where the heck was I? My mind just drifted to something there where it shouldn't have gone. Okay. No, 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 it's all good. I'm English. It's all good. You know, bodily functions, bodily parts, it's all good. Um, yes, yeah, so then you put your shaving soap over the top and then you shave. That's going to do two things. It's going to protect your baby soft skin. You're going to get a closer shave. I can't count three things. And you're not, you're not going to have skin that's going to be irritated. Does that sound like a good tip for the guys? Yee, maybe? No, he's like, I don't care. Rough and ready. Okay. Okay, gentlemen, put your hands. I'm doing this on purpose to you. How dare you say you don't care? Um, I'm just going to say it as it is. Save our vagisms. Okay, girls? That's what we're doing. Save our vagisms. Now, I'm not going to get into talking about things which could potentially embarrass a few people, but... Um, our vagina. Is he good? He's good. Oh, he's such a modern day man, isn't he? Um, so vagisms are a group of microorganisms, which are bacteria, virus, or fungus, um, which live in the vagina. Okay? So I'm going to just touch on a few potentially embarrassing subjects. One, tampons. You didn't hear that, did you? Watch what you buy, and please, please, please only buy organic tampons, girls, okay? Because a few years ago, and it's in the book, there was a very, very, very large company that used glue um, inside uh, of the, uh, the cardboard um, tubes. Now, there were women that we... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'll move to the men's parts next. You won't see any women leave when I talk about men's parts. <laughs> oh, oh, the game's on. Oh, that's different. Oh, I'll let you know what I said when you come back. You won't miss anything. Okay, organic tampons, girls. Okay, don't use anything else unless it's organic. And don't use bleach. Uh, the, the microbiome in a woman's vagina is so delicate. There is a million and one things which throw it off. Douching, <laughs> that throws it off. The, the ingredients in a douche are not good for that very sensitive, very delicate environment. So don't, don't douche. You don't need to douche. Um, and, of course, if you have more than one partner, wow, I'm getting really personal. <laughs> If you have more than one partner and you're using condoms, um, there are certain condoms which are non-latex, which are actually better for your vagisms. Okay, so I'm just saying. Do you want to know more or you do want to know more? Okay, well, you've got the flip book. Go to, um, I'm even going to give you the page number. This is going to really distract everybody. But uh, save our vagisms. Okay, here we go. It is on page, page, page. Um, right, here we go. Yeah, actually, oh, I'll just go through the uh, what's inside. Here we go. So uh, the deaf... Uh, I'm, I take you through soap, bath, and shower products, feminine hygiene products. Oh, you're going to love this one. Personal lubricants. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> coconut oil. Okay, Linda says coconut oil, girls, okay. Um, I do touch on, hello, unprotected sex. I do touch on that. Tampons, pubic hair removal. Hello, naughty table pubic hair removal. Um, oh, oral hygiene. Why does that come straight after <laughs> unprotected sex? 
I don't know who did this forward, but I will have words. I will have words. Hand sanitizers, nail care, uh, makeup, fragrances, deodorants, or antiperspirants. We cover it all. And if I haven't covered anything, let me know, and I will just make stuff up, basically. I'll just, just make it up. Right, here we go. Next. Are you happy about your vagisms now? You've got some information? Good. Here we go. Dermatologists. Evil people. Okay, so when you have a problem with your skin, you go to your dermatologist. But latest information suggests that some of the classic dermatological treatments uh, just kind of need to be rethought. Let's focus on benzoyl peroxide. When you're using benzoyl peroxide, you all know that it's not just wiping out the bad, but it's wiping out the good. But it is also aging you. <laughs> It's aging you, and that's because, I don't know if you can see it, the little dot at the end of that chemistry uh, symbol there, that indicates that that product is a radical. You're familiar with free radicals? Benzoyl peroxide is a free radical. So it's aging you as well as wiping out all your good microbiome. And this is why you will see things like green tea, in with, uh, there's a very famous brand, I won't name names because we're being filmed, but I'll just say, you know, that uses green tea in with their um, benzoyl peroxide. And the reason that that's in there is it's to counteract the damage that the benzoyl peroxide is creating. So green tea is an antioxidant whereas benzoyl peroxide is a pro-oxidant, so they need to balance it out. Um, okay, medications and how these can affect your skinisms. Um, there is uh, a lot of different medications on there, but I, I decided to actually pick on statins, cholesterol-lowering drugs. Now, Cholesterol-lowering drugs work really, really well, but cholesterol is present in the surface of our skin. It acts like the mortar between our cells. Now, the younger we are, the thicker the mortar. But as we get older, from about the, the age of 40, we start to lose 40% of our cholesterol. So what does cholesterol do in our skin? It basically helps to keep our skin moist and hydrated. So if you're taking statins and you're over 40 and you're wondering, why the heck is my skin dry? One, it's because the statin is removing the cholesterol from your system and it's removing it from the surface of your skin. And then because you are over 40, your level of cholesterol has naturally depleted anyway. So if you are taking statins, here's a solution. Take some omega fish oils. And if you, if you are a vegan, do algal oil, because that's actually helping dry skin from the inside out. And that actually works really, really well. If you have eczema, take uh, supplements, essential fatty acid supplements, because that actually helps dry skin as well. It helps eczema, it helps contact dermatitis. Um, and again, there's some really good essential fatty acid supplements out there. The reason why they're called essential is because our bodies don't produce them. And they are very essential to our health. So we require on getting omega-3, 6, 9, and even the rare 7 from our food. And that's why sometimes you have to supplement what you're not getting by taking supplements. Last but not least, not all of our bacteria is bad. It, it really isn't. There's a lot which is doing so much good. Our immune system, it's regulating our hormones. Um, our gut microbiome is actually called the second brain. It literally, like our hormones, is controlling everything. 